There are schemes and strategies that the devil uses to cause believers to open up doors to demons. Okay. The Bible says this and give no place to the devil. When the devil comes, he'll always come with temptation because he needs legal rights. And if you fall to the temptation and you enter into sin, you are giving him an opportunity. Now, I'm going somewhere with, the, I'm going somewhere with this. There was this former witch, this former sorcerer named Erica. She was initiated by her grandmother, I believe. She begins to reveal how witches and warlocks, if they cannot gain access to you spiritually, They'll come to you physically and start a fight. They'll insult you. They'll push you. They'll do something for you to get mad, for you to sin, for you to swear something so they can have access to you spiritually. And this is how they deceive and destroy many people's lives. Now, I want to talk about this scripturally, but we will first break. We'll first watch this. Uh, then we will um, go to the, what the word says about this. So let's go ahead and listen to this. They taught me how to trap souls. Uh, that lady, now that is it, the following day. She said, you have to learn how to create a web. I don't know how to explain it, but a web, something like, you can see it like the way you see the spider, uh, spider web. Eh? Okay. Yeah. You can trap a soul of somebody in that web and the person dreams when they are moving, but they are not getting to their destination. They are doing things. I want to stop there. I'm going to stop this really quick. Um, I remember when I used to go on walks back in the day, just, and I will always feel like a web is like all over my face. I'm talking about there's no holes or I'm not walking in between two walls. I'm not walking about between a, a door. Or I'm not walking in between anything, right? And I will just feel cobwebs all over my face but i'm in the middle of just nothing there's nothing around me no objects around me so how could there be a web i walk into a web and i'm just like and that is a revelation an indication that there's a, a trap there's a there's a an attack taking place the enemy has placed you in a trap right and you just feel the cobweb you feel the web and you don't know what's actually happened against the, your life the progression of your life and it has you and you try to take it off and whatnot but it's spiritual and your life is very slow. There is a, uh, there's anti-progression. In that season of my life, my whole family, anti-progression. Everything in my life, everything in my family, anti-progression. I would always feel these cobwebs. So I just really wanted to um, really talk about that little part right there. But they are, they are not full, like accomplishing. Like you keep them stagnant, doing the same thing, but no progress. But they are working so hard. But the more they work hard, the more they go back to square one. So she taught me how to do that. And how to do that is by capturing a person's spirit. And how do I capture a person's spirit is by involving in a, in a quarrel or a fight with that person. And when I involve myself in a fight or quarrel with that person, I tell that person, you will see. And when that person, when I tell them, you will see, they say, see what? Who do you think you are? And me, the only response is, you will see. So that night, because they have opened their lives to, to that attack by quarreling, when a person is at that, at that point of life, they are at zero level. They are vulnerable in the spiritual realm. So I would target at night. They are just thinking about me, meditating about the bad things I have done, the bad words I have spoken, how I, I am the one who invoked the, the, the fight, you know? Uh, so that night, they have a bad dream. In that dream, if they don't wake up to pray and cancel it, that is the end of them. Because whatever they are going to do, they are going to be struggling. Because me, I would get, I would go to that shrine, I call their spirit and I cage it in that web. So that is an evil forest, a forest of herbs. Wow. Wow. I'm telling you, life is spiritual. Their YouTube channels, life is spiritual. Life is indeed spiritual. We have to understand this, okay? Now, the Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 26 through 27, it says, And don't sin by letting your anger control you. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. 
for anger gives a foothold to the devil. So this is why it's important not to go to sleep angry. Going to sleep and thinking about how pissed off you are, how mad you are, how this person is stupid, dumb, why would they do this to me? And you allow that anger to rule you to the point now where you have hatred and you want this you want this person to pay for what they did and you want to do something bad to that person. You don't forgive that person. And that is an open door to the devil. The Bible says, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. So this woman, Erica, would come in order to trap people, in order to curse their life with, with demons and spirits. She will lead them into sin by quarrels. And we know the Bible literally says for us not to quarrel. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23 to, through 24, have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach patiently, enduring evil. Even when people come to do you wrong, you must be patient with your emotions, patient with, your, with, your, with yourself. Do not allow anger to take over. And if you get angry and you sin, repent quick. Because at nighttime, this is when they come to contend against you. You understand me? This is why the Bible also says, um, give no opportunity to the devil. Give no opportunity to the devil. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, give no opportunity to the devil. Do you understand me? And it, it's just completely, this completely blows my mind. I, I knew about this, but... When I'm hearing it from her, it's like how many souls or how many people's destinies have been stagnated because of lack of forgiveness, because of their anger. You could even be with family, mem family members and they're starting an argument at a family gathering and you're falling for it. They're just tempting you. And then you sin, you get angry and then boom, you have a bad dream. And you don't really understand the dream and whatnot. And you say, oh, I just had a dream, man. I was running and I got stuck somewhere and I was drowning. I was in a desolate area. I just, someone pulled me in, in, and put me in this cage. If you don't wake up and pray, it's going to become your reality. And you're going to see your life manifest in a way where there's anti-progression. And you're, you're going to try to get married. You're going to try to do a lot of things. Things are going to be hard. It's going to be struggle, struggle, struggle. Now, if you look at people's lives today, okay? There are many people today where there's generations of poverty, generations of this, this. This is not the will of God for people, okay? But because people have given open doors to the enemy, because people are serving the devil, it's either this. Listen, you either thrive with God or you thrive with the devil or, you know, you, you have hard work and you get to a certain place because the Bible says that um, the sun, you know, shines on the just and the unjust. The, the rain uh, comes upon the the just and the unjust, but to really be blessed on this earth, you know, it's either by God or the devil. You understand me? God will always bless some form of hard work. It's a principle. You work, you're going to eat, whatever. You know what I mean? But there are certain people that when they open doors to the devil, because the devil is more so focused on those who have a, who have a powerful destiny in the Lord. The devil is more focused on those who are Christians and whatnot. And if you, um, if you open up a door to the devil, he will hinder your destiny. He will literally hinder your destiny. The devil is roaming around the earth looking for whom he may devour. But he's actually using demons and he's using people. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8, be sober-minded, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So the witch, Erica, will go around seeking for whom she may devour, seeking whom she could start a quarrel with, seeking it. This is why when I get, I remember when I was in basketball practice, I got pissed off, I got mad. Um, my coach said something, teammates were saying stuff, and I got mad. At the end of it, I cussed and I swore and I was ready to fight. And before, uh, maybe like 20 minutes later, I repented. I asked God to forgive me. And I reached out to the person. And I said, I apologize. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Because I know when you open a door to the devil, the devil will come like this, seeking for whom he may devour. And the enemy can disguise himself as your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your coworker, 
your your siblings, your cousin, your auntie, your uncle, so they so they so they can open up a door without you knowing. And you you having these family gatherings, and there's all this beef, there's all this anger and whatnot, but it's actually like a breeding ground for incantations and witchcraft for when you go to sleep. This is why you need to avoid foolish arguments. Stay away from certain people because witchcraft is real. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. So that Satan will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. So the only way for Satan not to outsmart you, you have to be familiar with, with his evil schemes. So God wants you to know the schemes of witches, warlocks, devils, demons. God wants you to know how they operate so you do not fall to their temptation, so you don't fall to their way. Because it's not every person that you see at work, every person you would see outside, every person you see in your your extended family, even in your, your immediate family, it's not everyone you see that is walking with God, that has faith, that, you know, it's not everyone you see that are, that are just normal. There are some people who are on a demonic assignment, and I've have I have aunties who are, are who are literally sorcerers. I have uncles who are sorcerers, literally sorcerers. And trust me, a lot of people have been trapped spiritually, and they need deliverance. And this trap started not only with them, but their parents, their grandparents, and it continues. I remember I had a dream once concerning my bloodline and I saw all these people in a room locked and there was like a gatekeeper and he had a key to this room. I saw my sister in there. I saw some of my cousins in there and they're all laying on the floor. They're all laying on the floor and it was like anti-progression and delay. They were not allowed to leave this room spiritually, but physically they're walking around, you know, they're living their life. They're driving to the store and stuff like this. But spiritually, they're in the room. And I remember I was bringing one of my family members to deliverance, and the spirit of speaking is like, you have no right. You have no right to get her out of here. You have no right to her soul because there was some type of covenant and legal right for this to happen. I'm telling you. I'm t- what, did, what did that verse read again in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, 26 through 27? It says, And do not sin by letting anger control you. Do not let the sun go down while you're angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. And for anger gives a foothold to the devil. The Bible says, give no place to the devil in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. So the devil can tempt your wife. He can tempt you to anger. He can provoke you to anger. He can provoke anyone to anger. And, And myself, uh, growing up, in my family, my family knew me as a provoker. I used to provoke all the time. And to this day, that's probably my biggest weakness where I just make you know, stupid jokes sometimes and it can provoke people. And the devil can use me, even though I'm just playing around, but the devil can use that to cause someone to anger, cause someone to sin. So the Lord has been rebuking me, speaking to me in my dreams and whatnot. And I, I, really, I really want to talk to... Um, uh, about the dreams part, if you do not take record of your dreams, right? If you do not pray about your dreams, go into prayer and fasting about your dreams, it will become your reality because the Lord reveals dreams. He speaks to us through dreams. We have to understand that the Lord speaks through dreams. Um, the Bible says this in Job chapter 33, um, verse 15, it says, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep, let's go to verse 14, for God speaks in one way and in two, though man does not perceive it, man does not recognize it, okay? In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on men while they slumber on, while they slumber on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and terrifies them with warnings. Wake up. This is happening to you spiritually. Wake up. The enemy is planning this. Do you think when Eric was talking about the dream, that is a witch that is giving you the dream? No, it is God revealing what the enemy is doing at night. In a dream and a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on men while they slumber on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and terrifies them with warnings that he may turn 
man aside from his deed and conceal pride from a man. He keeps back his soul from the pit, his life from perishing by the sword. So the Lord cares about us so much that he will wake us up. He'll wake us up in the night. He'll give us dreams that terrify us. He will give, he will give us dreams of warning so he can keep our soul so we don't perish by witchcraft. So we do not end up going into hell. So this is why it's imperative. Number one, if you're not remembering your dreams, always, always come before the Lord before you go to sleep. Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Lord, forgive me for treating this person wrong. Lord, forgive me for this. Do not go to, the Bible says, do not go to sleep in your anger. Do you not know that the Bible says in the book of Matthew that while men slept, their enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. Okay, so there are some things that happen at night. Astral projection, usually at night. Sexual dreams happen at night. People go to sleep and don't wake up alive. They wake up dead. Okay, they don't wake up dead because they don't wake up, but they go to sleep and they never wake up, die. They go to sleep, they wake up with cancer. They go to sleep, they can't feel their leg anymore, amputated. Within the night, everything happened. You go to sleep, wake up bankrupt. You go to sleep, with, wake up with cancer. Aye. What happened in those eight hours, nine hours of you sleeping at night to cause cancer to come that night? Hey. You understand me? So we need to be people of prayer. We need to be children of light. We need to forgive. We need to confess our sins. And we need to, we need to stay away from anger. Stay away from anger. Me, I used to be a very angry person, fight all the time, swear all the time. I'm, God, I'm, I'm glad God delivered me from that because it gives an opportunity to the devil. Forgive, man. Because if you don't forgive, mm, stop coming for deliverance. Because you don't forgive, that is the portion of your soul that the devil has legal rights to. You can go to deliverance a million times. As long as you don't forgive, you're never going to get free. You're going to come back because there's an open door. Confess your sins when you've uh, done wrong, uh, wrong things to people. And if you can't get in contact with them, the Lord understands that. Confess it to the Lord. Confess it to someone or just confess it to the Lord. All right? Um, but just make sure, man, that you are living right before God internally mentally you know none of us can be perfect but this is why this is this is why jesus died on the cross so we can every day uh deny self pick up our cross die daily lord forgive me i repent lord lord purify me you know and that that is by the grace and mercy of god but i pray this has blessed you and brought insight um but make sure you pray after watching this video and let me know if you pray to prayer just pray please all right May the Lord be with you in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.